Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 1 Om Hail to Almighty Vasudeva The king said, The glory of the mighty kings who trace their original from the solar race as also from the lordly moon, to me extensively have been described by thee. Moreover, thou hast told, O holy sage, how once, in pious Yadu's lineage, by emanation of himself appeared the mighty Vishnu by the gods revealed. What were the wondrous deeds, I pray thee tell, of him, the Lord in whom all creatures dwell, the ancient universal soul, when he took birth in royal Yadu's dynasty. Who but a ritual butcher would abstain from verse which lords Uttama Shloka's fame, which by ascetics is sung and rehearsed, who have o'ercome for worldliness the thirst, like some potent simple, it cures all ills, captures the ear, the mind with rapture fills. But by his grace, my grandsires could cross o'er the Kuru host, a sea without a shore, where he who made the godlike vow became Leviathan, whom none might hope to tame. Yet they that ocean crossed as one might pass a tiny calf's hoof-print upon the grass. When scorched within my mother's womb I lay, and she his refuge sought, that he might stay the Brahma Astra launched by Drona's son, intent to take my life before begun, he with his discus entered in sublime, and saved the Pandu and the Kuru line. O learned one, the deeds to us relate of him who doth all creatures permeate, who from without is manifest as time, deals death by this, by that the life divine. Recount his fame and glorious enterprise when he assumed a mortal man's disguise. Moreover, Rama, the son of Rohini, is Sankarshan the great divinity. How was he removed from Devaki's womb if he did not another form assume? Why did Mukunda, Lord preeminent, leave his father's home for the settlement of cowherds, and how there did he begin to grow and flourish with his kith and kin? At Braja and at Madhu City too, what did the almighty Keshava do? Why killed he his uncle Kangsa a deed, nor by custom nor by holy writ decreed? How many years as man did he abide? How did he with the Vrishni clans reside? How did he in Yadhu's town spend his life? How many damsels did he take to wife? On these and other themes do thou relate. On Krishna's deeds, O sage, expatiate. Tis only right, since thou knowest all things well, to me, your faithful auditor, to tell. From food and even water to abstain is not for me difficult to sustain, as I may the sweet nectar quaff that drips of Hari's exploits from your lotus lips. Sutta said, O son, scion of the Brigus, having heard these inquiries, Vyasa's son was stirred, and Rif Vishnu's protege did gratulate, then that best devotee gan to relate, the worthy acts of Krishna, full of joy, which doth the stain of Kali's age destroy. Shri Sukha said, O pious prince, since you are so inclined, with concentrated intellect and mind, you have for themes on Vasudeva gained fondness and unflinching love have attained. 
When talks on Vasudeva's deeds are held, the sins of all three persons are dispelled. The speaker, who recites with eloquence, the interlocutor and audience. As Ganga doth her stream in three divide, and all three spheres are cleansed and purified. When goddess Earth, under the ponderous load, of haughty kings who on her made abode, addressed her way to Brahma for relief, and told him of the burden of her grief. In form of cow, to the great god she hies, her face disdained, and tears bedewed her eyes. She stood before him, piteous, distressed, and thus her plaint in broken words expressed. Footnote. Now I'll um, supply here the prayer of Goddess Earth from Vishnu Purana, Book 5, Chapter 1, verses 21 to 27. The Earth Goddess said, <clears throat> Many a Daitya demon enemy, led by the powerful Kala Nemi, the world of mortals have themselves possessed, and mortals there are by them sore oppressed. The great demon, Kalanemi of yore, was by the mighty Vishnu killed before, but is reborn as Ugrasena's son, and with him many a wicked demon. Arishta, Denuka, Keshi, the horse, Pralamba, Naraka of potent force, Shunda and Bana, fearsome in the fight, the son of Bali, puissant in his might, and hosts of demons in martial array as royal princes hold arbitrary sway. I cannot thus sustain the cumbent load of demons on me who have made abode. Therefore, ye gods, distressed I come to you, for timely relief and succour I sue. Unable to bear burden such as this, I sink into Patala's deep abyss. End of footnote. <clears throat> when Brahma had her lamentation heard, taking the earth, he with the gods conferred. And with the three-eyed lord in company, they sped to the shore of the milky sea. Arriving there, with ardour they adored Jagannatha, the universal lord with recitation of the ancient hymn Hait Purusha Shukta, they worshipped him. Brahma, in meditation, heard from high a voice that seemed to resonate the sky, which, having heard, he then himself addressed, the gods assembled, and these words expressed. Hearken, ye gods, and hear Hear, heed the words I say. I orders of the primal one convey, which must be acted on without delay. It seems the primal one already knew earth's distress for which his grace we sue, and therefore his commission he imparts. Ye gods should by your emanated parts in Yadu's dynasty, assume your birth to assist him in succouring the earth. The god of gods will act with power divine, the swift course of inexorable time, and till he has achieved his mighty aim to succour earth, ye shall with him remain, while he himself, the illustrious one, shall take his birth in Vasudeva's home, so long as he, the Lord, doth there abide, the damsels of heaven shall with him bide. His emanated part, Ananta height, the thousand-faced of independent might, will as the elder brother first proceed to serve Hari's pleasure by word and deed. The great goddess, as Vishnu Maya styled, by whom the world entire is beguiled, in order to his commandment to fulfil shall acts perform according to his will. Shri Shuka said, Thus the patriarch of patriarchs said, With consolation the earth comforted, 
and then commissioned each immortal god and went back to his own supreme abode. Sri Shuka said, I mean, no. In Mathura, the Yadu lords did reign, in Sura Sena's flourishing domain, where Sura Sena ruled in days of yore, which still the name of Sura Sena bore. Since then, Mathura's lofty citadel was made the Yadu prince's capital, from whence they ruled with arbitrary sway where Lord Hari is ever wont to stay. Some time ago, Vasudeva of the line of Sura had wed Devaki divine, and when the rites were done, the couple wed, they mounted on a car and homeward sped. Ugrasena's son, Kangsa, for to please his sister in the grand festivities, took up the reins, the metalled steeds to guide, and with an hundred golden cars they ride. Devaka, the fond father of the bride, a dowry in vast abundance supplied, four hundred elephants with rich brocade, with ornaments of, and golden chains conveyed. Also, along with the couple proceed fifteen thousand chargers of noble breed, such gifts as on the richest prince's weight of golden cars full one thousand and eight. Moreover, with the couple did repair two hundred maidens decorated fair. O oh, dear one, now the newlyweds began their way with blast of conch and beat of drum, the kettle drums and bugles sounding blare, the sanctity and blessedness declare. Kangsa, while guiding the car on the way, heard a voice, unembodied, gin to say, Thou fool, the eight this you of her you drive, shall of you of your most precious life deprive. This having heard the wicked sinful man, the blot and stain on all the Boja clan, his trenchant falchion raised in horrid dread, and seized his sister's hair to lop her head. To him, who stood thus ready to commit a deed abominable and unfit, the blessed one, Vasudeva, assayed to pacify him, and unto him said, Sri Vasudeva said, O hero of the Boja clan, renowned, the shining star whose praises doth resound. How can you a woman, your sister, slay, and this upon her very wedding day? O hero, death is certain for those born. Tis coeval with the physical form. It may be that today stern death appears, or else after a full one hundred years. When the body resolves into the five, the soul doth immediately contrive another body thereon to assume, and doth the progress of action resume. As step by step a man walks on the track, his forward foot puts down and lifts the back, or even as a worm upon the grass, from leaf to leaf and urged by acts, must pass. As a man, dreaming, doth a body see, derived from his diurnal reverie, the perceptions of day that might have been, whatever heard, contemplated, or seen, and with his dream body identifies, which upon past experience relies. E'en so, the soul, forgetful of the past, is straightway into a new body cast. Thus here and there the soul is urged and flees by restless mind and destiny's decrees, and when the body into five resolves, the mind within the attributes involves. For him another body Maya makes, and with a new form another birth takes. E'en as the luminaries with their beam in water vessels reflected are seen, but when the blowing wind the water shakes, the image reflected transforms and quakes, and thus the soul in body is confined, formed by the fond attachments of the mind. Thereby the soul, 
identity attains with body and deluded thus remains. Therefore, you should not envy or despise, but hear the good counsel that I advise, considering your own future welfare, for one who hates has cause others to fear. This damsel, your sister, a tender dame, as helpless daughter, on you has a claim for protection, and doth your fa favour seek, for you are one merciful to the weak. Sri Shuka said, O foremost of the Kurus, it was futile the evil with reason to reconcile, and like one who on human flesh doth feed, he purposed to enact the heinous deed. Anaka Dundubi saw his intent, and pondered another expedient, to avert the present danger to his wife, and him restrain from taking of her life. The wise a duty bound life to preserve, by whatever expedient may serve. But if he fails therein, nevertheless he does not thereby his duty transgress. By promising to death my future sons, from him her present death the damsel shuns. And if hereafter worthy sons should be, this present death may meet his destiny. I shall will consign hereafter to his care my sons, and shall have nothing more to fear. As when a burning piece of wood ignites, its neighbour catching the flame as it lights, and yet for some unknown reason we see, some scape the flame as if by destiny. Thus the destiny, inscrutable, brings the union and the disunion of things, and nor by me reason, nor by human laws, for changing bodies, can one find a cause. Considering which course to take and how, as far as his intellect would allow, solely, with great respect, and mind composed, his offer to the sinful one proposed, with lotus countenance, serene and pure, the grief within his mind he did inure, and outwardly a soft smile expressed, and to the shameless one his words addressed. Sri Vasudeva said, O noble one, from her there is no harm, and there is no cause for present alarm. The sons, the formless voice said, would ensue, to quell your fear I shall hand o'er to you. Sri Shuka said, Kansa perceived his reasoning was fit, and his sister to death did not commit. With pleasantries, flattery, and good cheer, satisfied to his chambers did repair. In due season, and in the course of time, Devaki, mother of the gods divine, gave birth successively in every year to eight bright sons and but one daughter fair. To Kansa, Anaka Dundubi brave, his firstborn, Kirtiman, reluctant gave. He, fearing to be perjured, he consigned the babe much disquieted in his mind. What distress can the good not tolerate? What deed might the wicked not perpetrate? Will wicked ones from evil deeds refrain? From what can the self-aware not abstain? Observing Saudi's equanimity, his truth, resolve, and strong tenacity, Kangsa was pleased, O king, and satisfied, and smiling, in few thus he replied. Take back the infant, and be of good cheer. From your first issue there is no cause of fear. It is from, from your eighth son the time I bide, from whom indeed my death is prophesied. With so be it, and taking back the child, Anaka Dundubi, noble and mild, was little at the tyrant's words consoled, who knew him as changeful and uncontrolled.
Nanda and all the other cowherd men, who abode in Braja with their women, Vasudeva and the Vrishni dynasty, and Yadu dames headed by Devaki, were as like gods in dignity and pride, and by friendship both houses were allied. Now this was known to Kangsa on report of Narad when he visited his court, that to remove the burden of the earth and slay the wicked, gods had taken birth. When the sage had gone, Kangsa, in his scorn, considered gods now as the Yadu's born, and weaned that any child of Devaki may well be Vishnu, his adversary. Vasudev and Devaki he detains, holds them in durance and binds them in chains, and thinking that each child might be Vishnu, doubtful one after another he slew. Tis seen that greedy kings immersed in sin slay mother, father, friends, and kith and kin, and envious of others and their gain, they murder may or have any one slain. His previous existence he recalled, as the great demon Kalanemi called, who had with Vishnu in the ancient strife been quite defeated and deprived of life, and thus his persecution he began upon the members of the Yadu clan. His father, Ugrasena, he had bound, who ruled the realms of Surasena's round, and made Bojas and Andakas prostrate, and ruled with arbitrary sway the state. Thus ends chapter 1 in book 10 of the great and glorious Bhagavat Purana, the text beloved of swan-like saints sung by the son of Vyasa.